Welcome to the sixth special episode of the Sailor Time to Pause podcast from Plexus Salvation Army, an online church in the UK. As we journey through Advent this year, we're joined by chaplains from our Homelessness Services Unit who work in our life houses and hostels around the country. They will help us to explore the four great themes of hope, peace, love and joy. Today, as we will be all through this week, we're joined by Jim Cusson from Willow House in Reading, who's considering our second theme of peace. Major Jim Cusson and my wife and I are chaplains with the Salvation Army's Homelessness Services and currently serving in Reading, Berkshire. And one day a week I work as a chaplain with the local fire service. Now did you know that on this day, on the 5th of December, way back in 1958, Britain's very first motorway opened to traffic? Just eight miles long, it was known back then as the Preston Bypass. And today it's now a part of the M6. And the M6, as you may know, is Britain's longest motorway. But have you any idea which is Britain's shortest? Well, I'm not sure that Google or Alexa will be of much help here. But the correct answer is the M96. And at 400 metres long, it's registered with Highway England. It is officially Britain's shortest motorway. It's unlikely you've heard of it, and it's even more unlikely that you'll ever drive on it, unless that is you're a member of the emergency services because the M96 is located within a fire service training ground in Gloucestershire. Now, because of my chaplaincy work with the fire service, I've been to that training ground on a few occasions, and a fascinating place it is, as well as car wrecks, there are train wrecks and plane wrecks, and indeed, every conceivable scenario is set up which emergency service workers may face in their day-to-day duties. But no matter how challenging or how huge any rescue operation may be, it pales into insignificance when compared to the greatest and costliest rescue mission ever. And that involved God sending his son to earth. He arrived as a helpless babe. He was born in a drafty stable in the little town of Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. And at Christmas, we celebrate his arrival. So why the great rescue? Why do we need to be rescued? Well, the Bible tells us that God created a perfect world and made man, you and me, in his image to be part of his family. Now, being made in God's image means that, unlike robots, we have free will, freedom of choice. We're free to choose what we think, what we say, what we do. And as you'll read in the early part of the Bible, man was tempted to doubt God's word, and doubt God's word he did. He chose, as it were, to go his own way and do his own thing. And that's when everything went wrong. 
Paradise was lost, relations were ruined, and all that is recorded in the first bit of the Bible. But the good news is, God didn't give up on man. And the rest of the Bible is about the unfolding of God's great rescue plan, God's plan to restore ruined relations, a plan to bring peace between himself and man, a plan to bring peace on earth. In the words of the carol, Hark the herald angels sing, speak of peace on earth, and of God and sinners being reconciled. Just before we hear that carol, maybe it's helpful for me to say what sin is. It has been said that to sin is to do what I want to do and not what God wants. To sin is to choose to go my way and not God's way. And notice that the word sin at its center has a single letter, I. And that pretty much sums up what sin is, I at the center and not God. Just let's 